Thank you for that, Bruce. Uh, good morning, everyone. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Ça me fait grand plaisir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm really pleased to be here this morning. Here. We see. Um, I'm here to share uh, my story. Uh, my story is one of entrepreneurship. Um, as Bruce uh, mentioned, I have been an entrepreneur uh, my whole life. I uh, started at a very young age in my hometown of Montague, PEI, which is uh, down east, as we like to say around here. I consider Prince Edward Island the entrepreneurial island. In fact, I think PEI actually truly stands for the perfect entrepreneur's island. And I hope that my story uh, enlightens you, for those of you who are not as familiar with the true spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship, which we have here. Um, our company is called Island Abbey Foods, and we're known for our first brand, which is called Honey Bee, and we make rather unique honey products. Uh, I thought I'd start off with just a very brief uh, CV. I am what a lot of people refer to as a serial entrepreneur. I started my first business at home in Montague when I was 11, obviously under the guidance of my family, very, very fortunate to have grown up in a family of business people in the primary sectors, agriculture, the fishery, forestry, as well as small business, and developed under their tutelage uh, a love for commerce and for people at a very early age. My, my first business was picking strawberries at my neighbor's farm, quite literally, Harry Neighbors was his name, and selling them at the end of uh, the lane. The following year, uh, my father suggested, well, why not hire some of your friends to work in the field and you can hang out in the booth? So I like to say I had employees when I was 12. Um, but that mentorship from a very early age, uh, it really embedded a love for uh, business and for working with people because I learned at that young age that it is all about the team. Today, I'm very proud to say that uh, with my family and, uh, and uh, friends, I am involved in two local small businesses, one in technology, believe it or not, and the other in food. Um, they would not be where they are today without the local island community supporting them. Uh, and I wanted to share with you some of those successes. I have had many successes, but as it says up there, more importantly, I've had failures. And this is very, very important uh, as an entrepreneur, to recognize that failure is not the end. It is mere, merely a tool to the next, uh, to the next step. Um, as was alluded, I was a member of a, an acting troupe. This picture was not actually the original picture of the Fathers of Confederation. This is a picture of the Fathers of Confederation Acting Troop, which was formed in 1989. I was very fortunate to have been uh, selected as one of the uh, actors for uh, the summer to participate in the 125th uh, celebration of the original meeting here. And uh, I thought I would share this picture of a very dapper young man. Uh, his name was Charles Drinkwater. I came to discover after being uh, given the role that he was actually Sir John A's uh, personal aide, um, in other words, bartender. And so uh, uh, Sir John A, uh, played by a friend of mine that summer, he, uh, he constantly referred to me as uh, his best friend, rightly so. Um, but for me, uh, being involved in the 125th uh, anniversary of the Charlottetown meeting and the 150th uh, anniversary next year, leading into 2017, is uh, extremely important. Um, I was very proud to have been a part of the 125th uh, celebration and uh, very pleased that uh, I'm around to see the bicentennial. Um, my business, Island Abbey Foods, is actually a family business. I started it with my wife. Uh, it leans on the legacy uh, of my family's history here on Prince Edward Island. We've been uh, farming on PEI since uh, 1780. And uh, my family settled on the North Shore of PEI, a very beautiful place. As I'm sure many of you know, if you have any family in agriculture or in small business, as most farms are, long-term success is incredibly challenging. It requires innovation. And I believe that 
uh, Prince Edward Islanders, and I believe Canadians, are actually uniquely positioned for this, simply because it has been a challenge since we all landed here, uh, whether it was 200 years ago or 20 years ago, to make a place here. Um, agricultural innovation is generally about survival, but uh, it's also about new ideas and approaching things in a different way. And I'd like to share with you something that I created many years ago. I was living on the West Coast, uh, out in Vancouver after finishing school. I moved out there to work in the technology sector. I've been working in uh, IT for many years. And one weekend, went uh, camping with some friends up near Whistler. We had to hike into our campsite. It was a, a full day hike, it took us about eight hours. And upon landing at the campsite, I opened up my backpack and discovered that the glass jar of honey I had in the top of my pack had shattered over everything inside. And I thought to myself, am I in bear country? <laughs> I was indeed in bear country. I also thought there's got to be a better way. And this is the uh, eureka moment that many people in agriculture experience whenever they're trying to come up with a new approach to something, usually a challenge. That challenge that day was how could I carry around my honey and not have it break over everything? I am a little clumsy. I slipped and fell on the trail, I admit it. Um, but that eureka moment was inspiration to discover uh, perhaps another way to uh, carry honey around, make it more convenient. And what we've done is we've created the world's first method to dehydrate honey into a solid form that is 100% pure. We have several different products which we market. A honey cube for tea and coffee called the Honey Drop. So if you do not want to use a sugar cube, you may use it. Honey candies called Honey Delights, Honey Sprinkles and more recently, honey lozenges. We can embed any therapeutic ingredient within this. And so we're using it to deliver natural therapeutics, bioactives, and we hope one day to use it to deliver over-the-counter medication and pharmaceuticals. Very, very proud to have gotten some recognition over the years. Um, this right here uh, is uh, an award which we received in the fall of 2010 from a show in Paris called CIAL, which stands for Salon International d'Alimentation. It is the largest food show in the world. Literally double the population of Prince Edward Island attends this show. We were nominated as a, an example of innovation from Canada, and we won the best new product from Canada. It put us into the running for the overall gold medal called the CIAL d'Or, and I'm very pleased to say that we're the first Canadian company in over 50 years of this show to ever win. More recently, uh, we were very excited to have been chosen by one of the most famous Canadians of late, Commander Chris Hadfield, to accompany him to the International Space Station. He actually chose the Honey Bee Honey Drop to go into space, one of 12 Canadian snacks for space that were chosen and very, very excited because he was actually part of the uh, committee which chose our product. If you want to see something funny, I suggest you Google uh, astronaut opening can of honey in space. Extremely challenging to do, and uh, we believe that uh, our honey drop was a more convenient form for them. You could actually see it floating around. Um, I was most excited to uh, get up and share our story with you here today because I believe truly if we can do it, anybody can do it. And I would ask that one of the uh, messages for 2017 is a call to action to support Canadian entrepreneurs. I truly, truly believe that Honey Bee can do it, anybody can do it. It requires support, it requires mentorship, it requires people taking risks, they must be educated ones. We have the tools all across this great nation of ours to do so. And our future lies in small business. Every big company started in somebody's basement or garage. It's true. I also believe that we need to encourage our youth to become entrepreneurs at as early an age as possible. Inspire them and watch them go. There are many programs out there that are encouraging youth and encouraging anyone to get into entrepreneurship. One of them that I've involved in is called Startup Canada. And I believe that programs such as this, whether it's Startup Canada, 
the Manning Innovation Awards, Junior Achievement, and the like need to be a part of the 2017 activities because it is incredibly important to our future. I'd also like to say that uh, I uh, just found out from uh, our uh, mayor, Richard, this morning that 2017 is not just the bicentennial, but it also is also the centennial of my hometown, Montague, Prince Edward Island. So it is going to hold an extra special place for myself and uh, everybody who grew up in Montague. So uh, very excited to be a part of this, very excited to hear the outcomes of these discussions across the nation. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. Hey John, a lot, of, uh, a lot of your success has come from synthesizing things down, as you showed us earlier. If you had to, to synthesize down and suggest one outstanding business principle that has worked for you through the years, one thing that you rely on almost daily, what would it be? Truly, I think uh, the, the, one of the biggest challenges that entrepreneurs have is recognizing uh, when they should ask for help and surrounding themselves with people, whether it's a team or mentors, in order to help them achieve their ultimate goal, which is success. Surround yourself with people that are smarter than you are, and you increase your probability, and you will also learn, and that is incredibly important. Don't be afraid to learn from others. Thank you, John. Yes. Thank you.